So, logic. Let's make sure I'm on. Mm -hmm. There I am. Good. Close ad, and can I please have my chat? All right, I guess not. Okay, well, let's do the chat up here then. Okay, today, today, today. What are we doing today? Let me look at my streaming topics here. Um, GDC female will be for this channel. Uh, Yoshi, we can continue doing that, so that was fun. Uh, the, the honeycomb, I gave that a shot. Didn't go too hot. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. I'm going to keep doing Yoshi stuff, if that's cool with you guys. Or not necessarily Yoshi stuff, but just Mario stuff, because they're so fun to model. And we can have fun rendering. Let me set up my Wacom real quick here. keep having to change my screen around for tutorials and demos and all that stuff. So I'm going to use a portion... And I'm going to stick that right there over my ZBrush. Thank you, Wacom. Alrighty. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to grab a sphere here. And I'm also going to turn off my Camtasia. My Matcap Gray. Hit X to go across X symmetry. Uh, perspective I'm going to leave off. And floor will turn on. Make sure we're Z forward. There we go. And, uh, heck, might as well start with uh, Make Polymesh 3D. Turn off Blur, turn off Reject, turn that resolution down just a bit, hit DynaMesh. And now I think we're good to go. Let me, uh, let's, since it's Halloween, let me throw this. Let me look for some reference here. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good one. Alright, let's set this page open here. So we're gonna make a ghost. Okay. Looks like this ghost is a little oblong, so I'm gonna kinda push this over here. And it also looks like it has a little tail over here. So what you could do is you could use your move brush here. We have X symmetry turned on and also preferences edit turn off aligned cursive surface here. Hey video, thanks for showing up. We're just gonna model a little what do they call them? Boo ghost? Uh the one that's like scared when you look at him, but then as soon as you turn your back, he goes after you. We're going to do one of those. So you could use a uh, move brush to do this. You could use snake hook to do this. You could use a mask and a transpose to do this. Um, to get a little bit more control whenever I'm doing stylized stuff, what I like to do is just go in here and grab a sphere. For you guys, it'll be like brush insert BI and then just grab an insert primitive. You can hit M or you can go up here. I'm used to hitting M to just really quickly go through here. Um, Scrolling sometimes works, sometimes doesn't for me. But um, we'll just grab a Sphere 32 and we'll just throw that on here. And that will allow me to position this just a little bit more precisely. And um, you can kind of give it a little bit of curve. In fact, if we want to give it a curve with our deformations, we could put our cursor where we want to and then go into like bend arc and then just bend this thing a little bit here kind of swoop that up and we can also use this luckily for the arms too so um, I can take this one and if I go over here and I hold down control and try to drag it a copy it's gonna do that so I'm gonna hit uh, X to turn off X symmetry and X just toggles that on and off under your transform menu hold down control drag out a copy there we go and then uh, I can use this to put a little arm over here now if I want this arm on both sides I'm gonna have to go over here to mirror and weld across the X symmetry, and that's of course under your geometry, modify topology. So now we've got two little arms, and I need to turn X back on so that I can do this on both sides. So there we go. We're almost done, and this is why I like making these characters. <laughs> so we can go ahead and uh, use our smooth brush to move this down. We're going to go through and zero mesh this. This is just getting our basic shapes in here. I'm also going to go ahead and crank up this resolution just a little bit. I like to work low as low as I can while I work, um, but for the stylized stuff, I want to get pretty clean outlines going here. Um, I also like to use Smooth Stronger. Hey, Rakesh, thanks for showing up. Are you Rakesh from my class? Um, let me turn this off here. 
I don't want to assume that, but if you are, welcome. If you're not, welcome anyways. Um, now I need to put a face on this guy. Let me see if I've got a an image I can use just to kind of paint it on. Mm -hmm. All right, here's a good one. So save as, ooh, we can even do a crown. This will be fun. Let me go ahead and save this. This is going to be Mario King Boo. And I'm going to go into texture, import. And we are streaming. And we're going to go to here. Well, thanks for showing up, man. And we'll go to uh, do, 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 texture, grab it, throw it on here. And uh, did the live QA, was that okay last night? I know we got kind of caught up in some other stuff but hopefully it was useful to you guys and uh, I think the next coming weeks you guys are really gonna like oh speaking of okay so we have this um, transparency you can see how whenever anything goes to pure black uh, zebra streets as an alpha so we kind of went over this so if you take this intensity and just kind of pop it up just a little bit that'll make it so that when I'm painting his face on he doesn't have a little empty spot there so now I'm gonna hit uh, the Z go in here and just kind of tone that down just a bit and now I can kind of make sure that um, everything's uh, going okay here so I'm gonna go ahead and position him in fact you know if I want to let's go ahead and make sure we find our center line first what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go into RGB with my standard brush and we're gonna go down to a medium gray and I'm gonna hold down shift so when I use my shift key Sometimes I like doing this kind of shift where I start drawing and then hold down shift and then it snaps to a single line. Sometimes I like to go into my stroke menu, uh, turn off lazy mouse, and then let's go ahead and fill that area. So now when I hold down shift, it'll actually constrain, let me see, RGB. Come on, start drawing. Let's also go into no, oh, I need to change it to gray, duh. Okay, so as I start drawing, I can hold that shift, and it'll just constrain it to my brush stroke. The cool thing about that is, number one, I can kind of just do it lightly. It's not going to snap it to a full value. Another cool thing you can do is, this is a transpose thing, I think. So if you turn off this and you go to transpose, and let's say I want to make a line exactly at this angle, I can hold down control, tap that little white dot right there, and now I can hold down shift and make a line like so. So instead of using the green one to snap, I can just use my transpose line, and you can use it for sculpting as well. But I just wanted to find this midline, so when I bring this back, I know where the middle of the body is, and I can position that like right between his eyebrows here. So uh, I guess I should also pr probably turn on perspective, because I'm assuming this reference is also in perspective. And then we can go in here into our move brush. There we go. And, uh, that's, and if you want to change any of the perspective stuff, you can go in here to the draw menu. And on this one, you can change your angle of view. You can kind of increase that and get a little bit more of a extreme angle, or you can lessen it to more of an orthographic angle here. So this is more a portraiture down here in the 35 range, and then up here is like super extreme fish islands. So eh, it's up to you. You can dial that in as needed. Um, I think this will work fine. Looks like his tail should be a little lower and a little more compressed in maybe. Kind of hard to tell from some of these images. I'm not getting a whole lot of side and back views, but I can, oops, I can modify this. I'm going to turn off RGB for our clay brush here. And uh, yeah, we got Smooth Stronger on. So again, I'm going to zero mesh this in a bit. I'm just trying to get the main uh, shape dialed in. And uh, you know what? This is a smooth transition. I don't know why I built in a little divot there. So from here, we got a smooth transition. Yeah, and you know what? That tail is a bit lower my mistake now that I'm looking at it. So I'm going to drop this way down and then smooth this back out. And you know, if it's getting hard to smooth, even the smooth stronger, just drop your resolution down. And that'll just, there's also two smooth algorithms. So you hold down shift and start smoothing and then let go of shift. That'll just average the vertices over the form, which is sometimes nice to use. There we go. Something like this. So then uh, go back into Z, and once we get this guy positioned a little bit, we can go and save our camera views, which we've done before, even on the stuff we've been doing. Very simple stuff, simple but fun stuff here. And 
this arm here. Let's make this one a little bit flatter. Also looks like it comes out this way just a bit. Put that in here. And uh, if you want to, you can actually H polish, start finding some of these planes here. I shouldn't really be sweating the the forms as much as basically just the goopy little ghost guy. So, all right, I think we're done with that. So one thing I also like to do, this is a quick one. We can use movie or we can use the document here. And we can go to save a custom view. I won't bother opening up the timeline or anything for this. Body somewhere in here. Get that midline in here. And once I have this position, we can always go back to it just by saving custom view here. And I'm just going to go into my RGB, and then we'll just go ahead and paint his face on here. And put a little bit of a crown in there. Something like this. Um, I'm going to knock this back just a little bit. So RGB, turn the intensity down, go to color, fill object, and choose a white. Let me step forward one. There we go. So color, fill object with white, and then you can just kind of knock that back. Just like dropping the opacity on a Photoshop layer. And I think we're ready to start dynameshing this thing. Um, the angle of view I usually use, I usually don't use perspective at all. I'm used to doing a lot of hard surface modeling. Um, question, uh, so Rakesh asks, uh, what's the angle of view you use for perspective? But um, it was basically, I use um, whatever the default is, uh, it when I use perspective for, I do so much hard surface modeling that it's hard for me to even work in perspective. I know that's bad for organic stuff, but you know what? It is what it is. I'm going to smooth this out. Okay, so uh, QA is like a little sleepy at the time. Yeah, sorry about that. I mean, our, yeah, depending on where you are, it's 6 o'clock here. Well, 6.15 here. Um, so now let's go ahead and carve this thing out. So it's going to go back and in. I think we can just do, let's do something like this. We're going to go to BTO. That's going to be our topology brush. I'm going to go out of X symmetry because I don't like dealing with symmetry with the topology brush. And I'm just going to go across here and across here. And then as I'm dragging this around, we're going to make this here. And this will be just the shape of his mouth here. And surprisingly, we did some more complex stuff uh, a few weeks ago. And um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and split unmasked points. And that's going to throw this down here. Uh, we're going to go to mirror, mirror and weld. And now I've got the shape of his mouth, and I'm going to use this. Uh, you know what? We could just do a preview as a live Boolean here. And now you can kind of see what we're going for, which is, you know, cutting this mouth out. If we want to, we can also go through here. Let's do uncrease all, and then we'll drop our crease tolerance down, hit dynamic, and now you can kind of see what we're going for here. So now if we go back into transparency mode or go into solo mode, we can take this polygroup back here, turn X on, Q mesh, polygroup all. We can just hold down shift and just pull this back. And you're going to see in the live Boolean, we're getting a bit more coverage in there. Now, if I want to round this uh, little back part out, there's a bunch of different ways we can do that with the uh, Z modeler here. Um, number one, what I'm going to do, let's hover over this edge, insert single edge, we pull down Alt, and then just, just kill those ones. Let's kind of simplify these shapes a little bit. And then we can go over here. Let's try doing a bevel edge loop complete. Uh, uh, that's what I figured it was going to do. Let's try this. Uh, number one, you can also smooth. So let's turn our smooth stronger way down. And we can just kind of go through here and soften these shapes up a little bit. I'm also going to do an uncrease all. So you can just manually go in here and kind of soften these transitions a bit. Do a little bit of sculpting. And now let's see. There we go. Now I can just bevel that off. Good enough. Then we want to pull those back. And now what we can do is I want to keep this front side crease and then this back side uh, not crease. So now that we've softened these normal angles or these angles between the vertices here, we can probably go back to our crease tolerance at crease and it'll still grab these corners, which might actually be okay. Let's try that. Let's crease, hit dynamic. I'm going to go out of solo mode. 
Yeah, something like that. That's fine. Um, so we've got this here, and it also looks like there's a mouth bag in here, but it also cuts in a little bit on the side. So let's go ahead and add that. So let's go into solo mode here. And we're going to go to insert single edge loop. This will be the inside corner of the mouth. And then we're going to go to, let's do this. Let's hold down control shift, go to select last. I'm going to take this poly loop right here, invert it, hit control W, make it its own poly group. And then we can take all of these ones back here, hit control W. And now what I can do, because this is going to be the inside of lip, I want to move all of these up. So I'm going to do a Q mesh polygroup all. I'm just going to Q mesh these up. And I'm also going to go ahead over this, do crease, edge, and then hold down alt to uncrease that. So now let's see. There we go. So it goes in and then kind of up a little bit. I think that'll work fine. And let's also move this back a little bit. So we're going to take slide edge loop complete. We're going to move this back and we're going to move this back. We can also go in here and we can scale edge loop complete and scale this in. Now we got to put a tongue in there. Um, so I'm going to go to my primitive menu here. Let's take a sphere 16. I'm just going to throw this right on here. Now I'm, when I'm drawing that out, it's going onto my Boolean mesh here. So I'm just going to do a quick split on mass points and we're going to make that additive. So now let's go back to here. We'll take the tongue and we'll just start putting this in here. So go ahead and shrink this down. Oh man, it's 2 p.m. where video is at, 6.30 a.m. Okay, so me and uh, Rakesh are in the same time-ish. Oh wait, no, you're on the exact opposite time. <laughs> oh no, you're, you're, you're where I am at, because I'm 6.18 here. Um, so we'll go ahead and put this in here, and let's go into transparency mode here. Now, in order for this tongue to kind of just flop out a little bit, again, I'm going to use my bend angle. So yeah, let's just do this. We'll put this in here. I'm going to put the bend right in the middle. And um, oh man, three o'clock in the afternoon. I can't wait for that actually, because I am really not feeling it today. I don't know why. Actually, you know what? I'll wake up. Some mornings I'm ready to go, and then some other mornings I'm like, uh, not quite. There we go. Now we've got a little tongue going here. Um, and I suppose we could make this a Dynamesh as well. I'm going to raise this resolution up a bit because that's pretty close to the end shape I want. But first, I'm going to hit Apply on my Dynamic, which is, again, for you guys on their Geometry Dynamesh, our dyna Dynamic Subdiv. And then once we've done that, we can Dynamesh. It'll be nice and smooth. And go through here, smooth this out. And then uh, to put a crease in the middle, let's go to our Damien Standard Brush. And again, we'll just hold down. Um, we'll turn off. And there's nothing wrong with that kind of sticky one, but I prefer just to do this. And if you need to, you can also go in here with your pinch brush and kind of pinch those a little bit more. And you can go through here with inflate or your clay brush and kind of inflate that up a bit. Um, you can also go through and you can pinch this. You can use your move brush. We can also use your pinch brush to kind of get a little thin to thick. And then also where this kind of comes out and over, let's dial that in a little bit more. I'm going to go through here. I'll scale this down. Actually, you know what? Let's hit Z in our custom one. And we'll go ahead and try and match this up. So I'm going to come out a little bit. And I'm going to scale this up, move it down, rotate it down in the X. It's going to be something like this. So I can kind of get it dialed in on the reference, and then I can look from the side view and be like, okay, it, go, it doesn't go down that crazy. Oh, yeah, and I had perspective on, so that helps. <laughs> Turn perspective on. There we go. 
even closer. So now we can kind of dial this in a little bit. All right, I think we're good. Something like this. And again, once we zero mesh, we can finagle this a little bit closer. Okay, there's a few more things to do. Um, these things are really just kind of painted on in the reference, it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and give them a little bit of dimension. So we're going to take these sphere 16s again, split our mass points, and we'll just kind of, whoops, forgot when they split on mass. we got to go down here and select them. I do split on mass to throw below, and then I do split mass points to keep it above and keep it active. So depending on what I'm trying to make here, turn on LSIM so you can just scale it across this local axis here. We can kind of just push these in, spread them out a little bit more, maybe make them a little bit flatter, rotate it just a tad, hit D. There we go. And then for the eyebrows, uh, I think I'm just going to do, because we probably need to move these closer together too. Um, I'm just going to go to, again, the BTO. I'm just going to do topology brush. I'm going to take the head here, hold down shift, turn everything off except for the head. We can go ahead and turn off our light boolean. And now we can hit X symmetry. And this time I am going to use the X symmetry of the Boolean brush just because I'm going to be doing a very particular shape. Although, really, I'm going to turn it off. I said I was, but I lied. We're just going to go across that midline and then we're just going to mirror it over. That's how I like to do it. There we go. So now uh, there's our midline here. Let's just continue this out all the way across. And then we'll say our midline somewhere to the side. And now we can just go through here and very quickly add that geo. We can tap off to make it. And go ahead and get split on mass points. That'll shoot it below. And now I can do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. Turn off LSIM before you do that. There you go. And now we can move this around. You don't, you don't even have to give it thickness. Let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry here. If you don't want, you can just move it around and then you can use the modeler to uh, divide that up. But I think that'll work here. Let's go ahead and do, actually that should work. Let's hit D. I'll go ahead and give us our brow shape here. We're in a solo mode. I'm going to take this one and right down the middle, I'm going to do a crease, edge loop complete, and just crease all that. There we go. Hold down shift, bring everything back. Go back into the live preview render, my Boolean render, and I think we're pretty close. Still a little bit more hard surface modeling. I'm going to go in here to the cylinder 12 on the body here. Hit X symmetry, we're just going to drag a cylinder right onto the top. Go ahead and split mass points. And on this cylinder, I'm going to position this thing here. Let's go ahead and turn on perspective. I guess this goes back a little bit, tilts back a little bit more, shrinks down, something like this. And let's figure out how to model oops, a crown. Let's start at the bottom here. You know, we'll go up to a triangle here. Um, <laughs> I have a constant problem with pinching on the corners when I when I use creasing for hard surface modeling. Are there some tricks to avoid that? I've tried using control loops with the same result. Uh, a little bit better, probably. Yeah, um, that's just kind of the woes of subdivision. Oops, subdivision modeling. So, for example, if we grab a, it doesn't really matter. And then we go down here to initialize. Let's grab a cube, cube. And then I like to go deformation unify. So, for example, if we go in here and we go to like inset, polygroup island, region, and you pull this one in, then you pull this one in, and then you Q mesh all the way through, and then you scale this in. And it's like, okay, now I want to do a crease tolerance and hit dynamic. You're going to get like, okay, now I've got to go through here and I've got a crease edge loop complete these little angles here so it doesn't get uh, averaged through there. Uh, and that sometimes works, but if it's on a curved surface and on corners, I really hate 
dealing with those things. Um, usually what I'll do, for example, is if I'll go through here, we'll go make polymesh 3D, and let's say we're doing like a slice rectangle on this thing. So we've got hard corners on here, right? Um, and then we can just do, let's go ahead and let's see, zero mesh these together, keep our groups on, smooth groups off, uh, half. So there we've got our hard surface here. And then if I want to, I can go ahead and just split this off and then I can Q mesh polygroup all here. Although let's go ahead and do another half. And then I can go to inset. And then we can go to Q mesh. Actually, let's go over here. Let's go to collapse edge. Collapse edge. So if we got a shape like this, um, we can go ahead and delete polygroup all. And then Q mesh polygroup all. So yeah, on curved surfaces with corners, and then you want to go in here to like your crease tolerance at dynamic. And I guess that works okay too, but occasionally, yeah, over here it didn't. Let's see, crease, edge with complete here. Um, actually, let's go ahead and move this in too. So I'm going to take this cube mesh polygroup ball, let's hold down shift. And let's make this a little bit thicker here. You can get this kind of look where it's starting to let you know you have to crease this because if you don't crease this, let's go to crease edge, hold on alt, you'll get pinching towards here. So this is where, um, actually let's go ahead and insert, let's get rid of this one, smooth that transition out. Um, yeah, this is where you would have to, you know, build in control loops here to fix this without using creasing, uh, but in a pinch. What I'll sometimes do is get my basic shape in Dynamesh, and then I'll just let Zeromesher handle the, the retopology for me. So if I go down here to delete lower, grab this one, delete hidden, and then just Zeromesh same. You know, sometimes Zeromesh will give me enough geometry in there to go ahead and make the shape correct. Whenever I'm having um, pinching issues, I'm trying to think of another example. Oh, one easy one is this one here. So if you were to grab a, whoops, not a ghost. Good example would be cylinder 3D here. Go into edit mode, go into make polymesh 3D. And let's say you were wanted to get fancy and go like split point and you're gonna split all these points in here. And then you were going to, let's go ahead and group by normals as well. And then you can go through here. Let's go to delete single poly. And we'll go ahead and isolate this. We'll hit delete hidden. And then we'll go to Q mesh poly group all. And it's like, yeah, that's going to be great, right? And you hit D. And if you keep doing that, see how you're getting this nasty pinching over here? In order to resolve a curved object going into a curved surface, you got to build just a ton of geometry here and you got to space these things out but once you space them out you have to stay on the curve you know so you'd, you could space them out manually then you can go in here and clip I suppose uh, but that's just a pain in the butt so what I prefer to do instead is again let zero mesh do the heavy lifting for me so again let's do group by normals here we'll hit D and we'll crease polygroup and then I'm gonna go to alt EM which is my hotkey for this thing. We'll grab some cylinders in here. And again, we'll just crease this down, push this in. And now we can do sticky, reset this. This one I don't wanna reset. There we go, so sticky. I'll hold on control and move this back and then hit one, give it a few more. And now what we can do is Split those off, make them subtractive. So now that I've got these polygroups all set up, let's go ahead and go to Boolean, dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh. 
there's our union mesh. I'm going to take this outside one, hit delete hidden. And now what zero mesh is going to do, you know, I guess we could do this across symmetry here. We'll go to mirror, mirror and weld, hit X and then zero mesher half. I'll keep the adaptive size up a little bit and see how it builds in all that stuff for me. Now I can go through here, Q mesh, polygroup all, crease polygroup, hit D. Nice and smooth. In order for me to do this traditionally with box modeling and smoothing along a cylinder would be a total pain in the butt. But letting zero mesh do the topology for me is much, much faster. So getting rid of pinching with zero mesh is probably how I'd end up doing it. Sorry for that roundabout <laughs> explanation. It took me a while to find a example. Uh, but, okay, so we've got this here, and let's go ahead, I'm going to, uh, this one actually looks like kind of a weird shape, so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go to Q-Mesh, Flat Island, and we're just going to Q-Mesh this up, and actually, let's hit W, hold down Control, and get this polygroup here, and then we'll shoot this back, and I just want to see how tall these little spikes need to go, and also, we're going to slide this, oh, you know what, turn on Perspective, There we go. So the spikes go here, bottom of the spikes go here, and we could use um, Z Remesher to do this too, but if you want to try and use Z Modeler, we can. We can go through here and we can collapse this edge here to a point, and it looks like this edge here. Other way, thank you. And then this edge back here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just paint the polygons we want to keep. So I'm going to hold down Alt, and we're just going to go through here. We'll paint all these ones, hold down Control Shift, Delete Hidden, and now we can do Q Mesh, Polygroup All, and we can just Q Mesh these out. And it looks like we need to collapse these to a midpoint, which isn't a huge deal. So let's go ahead and do our. Well, maybe it is kind of a huge deal. Also looks like I need to do a quick mirror, mirror and weld um, to put these together. I probably should have started with a, maybe an eight. Hmm. Let's try this. Let's go to insert multiple edge loops. I'm just going to put a middle one here and a middle one here. And then we'll just go through here and we'll do a quick collapse towards the center here. I only need to do it on one side because I can re-give it some thickness. So I just grab these outside ones again. Let's go into auto groups here. There we go. Delete hidden, Q mesh, polygroup all. And now we'll do our crease, dynamic, and then now we're getting this pinching here. So this is why resolving these box modeling issues is kind of a pain, but again, we can use zero mesher here. So let's do, let's do this. Let's go ahead and do smooth subdiv up to four apply. And I'm going to go in here to my H polish. And we can H polish this back. And if these things are supposed to be straight, I guess I can just go manually move these back. Let's go back to subdivision level one. There we go. Now we can hit D, step all the way up through. And we've resolved the um, smoothing here, so now I'm going to go to delete lower. Hold down Control Shift, isolate this, delete hidden, zero mesh, half. There we go. Q mesh, polygroup all. Crease, dynamic. A little bit better. 
And also here we can do our crease level. So we'll go to this one here and we'll do dynamic. Let's do edge loop, no, crease and dynamic. We're gonna smooth subdivide this up to three, crease level, actually crease level to three, smooth sub to four. Now to kind of build in a little edge loop here. So now we can go to shift D and around here we've got a little bottom ring. It looks like this needs to come out. So what I, two, two ways I can do this. Um, I could Q mesh this out and then bevel the edges or I can go to insert, uh, ba -ba insert, hover over an edge, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. We can pull this out and then just kind of round it off a little bit here. So let's go ahead and group by normals. Uncrease all, crease polygroup, D, all right, something like this. And we'll go ahead and, oh boy. So this little front one got a little bit borked, that's okay. So we'll do a mirror in the Z direction. So I'm gonna hold down shift. And let's see if we can do a mirror and weld in the Z direction with LSIM turned on. There we go. Let's turn off sticky. And again, we can go ahead and uh, apply those subdivisions. We can correct as needed. Take out any little warbly stuff, and then just Z remesh your shape back. So we'll grab this one, delete hidden. Let's do Z remesh same. And since I keep going out, let's go Q mesh polygroup all inwards. Uh oh, we need to weld these. Let's go ahead and go into our weld options here. Weld distance up, weld those points together. And now, Q mesh polygroup ball. Oh my god. All right, hold on just a second. Let's go ahead and turn off X. We'll go ahead and bridge these edges. I don't know why Ziri Mesher wants to keep doing that. Easy enough to fix, I suppose. Mirrored weld across the X. There we go. Sorry about that. And then we can just delete this edge here. Sorry, I didn't have X symmetry turned on. Okay, now delete this edge. Move this back out. Give me some skin thickness. Flip this around. Q mesh, polygroup island. Q mesh this down. Insert multiple edge loops. Give me some thickness. There we go. Group by normals. Let's change that max bend angle up a little bit. There we go. Increase polygroup, D for dynamic, smooth sub div 3, 4, crease level 3. There we go. Now we've got a little crown, shift Z, put it in here, go into perspective mode. And now we need to move this crown back quite a bit, probably scale it down. Make sure we're in <laughs> X symmetry. So I'm going to turn off X, go to the middle. Reset it, now go to custom. And now when I scale it uniformly, it won't do anything weird. Something like that. Alrighty, got the face on there. Go into our Boolean. 
and we're at zero mesh the body as well. Um, we can Boolean out the eyes here. We also need to put some teeth in there. Those just look like rounded cones. Let's see if we can put in BI brush insert primitives here. Mm, no cone. Well, let's make our own then. Let's grab a primitive cone. Edit. Let's see if there's any options in here. I don't use a whole lot of cones. I got an inner radius. Simplify that a bit. Doesn't look like it, but we can just make a brush out of this. Let's go to make polymesh 3D, B, create insert mesh, new. course when you're going to capture these you can capture them that way probably makes more sense to capture it this way so let's go to brush create insert mesh append okay and then that'll throw it that way and now we can go back here and now we can drag out these teeth like so looks like they've got one in the middle and then hold down control and we'll drag out a copy and we'll push these back Go to unmash my center, and we'll scale these up just a little bit more. Now for this one here, let's go into solo mode. I'm going to take these, and we're going to split hidden. We can shoot these below. We can make these additive. Kind of pushes this, pushes them in there. High enough for you, or is that just me talking low and slow? Because uh, I'm not yelling this morning. Um, let's see. Testing, 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 testing. Let me crank it up. Is this better? Hmm. Why is my mic so low today? Hello? Any better? Mic auxiliary stream cam is not on. Properties. Microphone USB audio device. Cool. All right. Um, so we got that all in there. Let's go ahead and grab these teeth. Let's make these a little bit better. So now these are rounded. Let's go into solo mode here. Polyframe, Shift D, and I don't know if I want these going to that many points here. Let's try this. Let's go to uh, Group by Normals, Mirror and Weld, and let's do, oops, looks like we got a little extra. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's try doing another Z remesh, but I want to keep groups. Let's do half. Yeah, I like that better. Uh, if you want to make these caps a little more traditional, you can go ahead and delete those. And we'll hover over this. We'll go to close, convex hole, control W. There you go. Now you can do a crease polygroup, hit D. And these don't look like they have much of a curve to them. Uh, I am going to uh, just bend them back just a little bit here and maybe flatten them out. And if you want to move these individually, what you can do is, is since they are all separate polygroups here, let's go to our brush menu here. We're going to go to auto masking. You can do topological, you can do auto uh, mask by polygroups. I'm just going to do mask by polygroups with a big brush. And we'll kind of just start positioning these things around a little bit. And it also looks like they need to be inflated just a little bit. So I'm going to go into my deformation menu and inflate. Yeah. 
And these transitions will be rounded out once I zero mesh his face, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I can also hold down control and grab this poly group here. Or let's go ahead and do another auto groups. Mirror and weld. Keeps giving me garbage in the middle here. And then I can hold down control and grab this one. All right, so let's fix this body. Uh, in order to fix this body, what I'm going to do is take the body, shoot up to the top, hold on shift, bend up arrow. I'm going to take this mouth hole thing, shoot up the bottom. And now with just these two showing, if I go over here to my subtool Boolean dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh. Let me go over here to U-mesh here. And it keeps our poly paint, which we don't really need anymore. And now what I can do is I'm going to take all of these interior mouthpieces here and hit Control W. And once again, trusty, these keep groups. I don't, I'll keep smooth groups up. Zero mesh this thing. Hopefully I have X symmetry turned on. Well, that's going. Um, uh, looking for some, oh, I moved the camera over to the left because I got these Dells and they there's not really a good spot on here to stick those cameras. So split the difference. Let's go ahead and help this out just a little bit by going in here with our smooth brush, turning on X symmetry, and we'll just smooth this transition out. So I'm going to grab this poly group here and we're just going to do a polish by features open circle and just tap that once. Let's polish by features, close circle on this one. So open circle, we'll polish it and really deform the surface and then close circle uh, polishes it but maintains your forms. So I just kind of did a mix between those and now let's do a zero measure. Keep groups, smooth groups, adaptive size down quite a bit, half. X symmetry turned on. And we'll add this to our collection of weirdo stuff we're making. There we go. So now I can just hit D and that'll go ahead and uh, give us a little bit of an angle on here. We can clean this up a little bit too. So if that's, if you want more of a transition between these two, you can go into insert single edge loop, hold down alt and just get rid of that edge ring. And then as those uh, vertices average, it will be I don't know why it would give you any warbling on that side. Let's see. Oh, there's some nasty polygons in there. Let's go over here to our weld. There we go. So now that we got this shape here, we can go back to where were we at? Which one is ours? Insert our body back in. We don't need these top two anymore. Delete. Delete. There we go. What else? We got this. We got that. We got the body. We got the hands. We need to insert some jewels on here. That should be pretty easy. Let's go ahead and just make an insert mesh brush for that. So we're going to take a trusty initialize Q cube. We're going to rotate this thing 45 degrees. And that will give us this shape here. Let's go ahead and squeeze it a little bit and lengthen it a little bit. And we're going to 
go in here to insert single ledge loop, hold down alt. We'll get rid of all this extraneous stuff. And really I only need these top two here. Let's go X symmetry, delete hidden, collapse edge. And really it should probably be flat. So let's flatten that out. Change my mind. Use our clip curve to flatten this out. And then we can control alt and that'll just mask that center point here. There's our little jewel. So really I probably should have started with a polyplane. Let's do that right. <laughs> let's do this. So we're going to go over here to our and there it is, plain 3D. And instead of, you know, you can just go over here to make poly mesh. You don't have to go through there and initialize because on this particular one, you can just do reconstruct and just reconstruct it down to just the shape, delete higher. And now we can go control alt, pull this up and then get your diamond shape like that. And then just go in here and hit X, collapse edge to the middle. Suppose you could also start from a triangle shape. Modified cone. Okay, so un uncrease all. And let's go ahead and put it back on this. So we'll go ahead and bridge edges. We're going to bridge here to here. If you want to see both sides, just turn on display properties double. Display properties down at the very bottom of your tool menu. There you go. So that's the jewel. And then to get this border around it, what we're going to do is let's do a quick mirror and weld. I'm going to do a Q mesh. Polygroup Island, hold down control and pop off a copy. Actually, I don't like doing that very much because I like to have things flush. So instead what I'm going to do is duplicate this off, hold down control shift, delete hidden, control shift isolate this. Then we can Q-Mesh Polygroup Island this one. And now we can Q-Mesh Polygroup Island this one. And now again we can do an insert, multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. We can kind of bump this out a bit. So now I've got that little thing set on here. Now we might have to use our Ben modifier here, but so let's go to Control W, Control W. We'll go ahead and merge this down, and we'll go to B, Create Insert Mesh, New. And then we're going to split unmasked points, Shift D. And then we'll scale this down. So in order to get this thing to sit flush, let's go into our bend arc. And now we want to bend it this way from the top. There we go, something like that. Except, fatten that out a little bit. There we go. So. Add more jewels like that. I um, wonder if we could do an array mesh that would put one here and on the back, or we can hit X symmetry off, drag out a copy, and we'll just scoot this around, hold down shift, and we'll just rotate that 90 degrees, move it out this way. And one more, hold down control. Actually, let's take this one duplicate this whole subtool off. We'll grab this top one here. We'll go to delete hidden. I'm going to mirror this in the Z. And I probably, now that I look at it, I could have gotten the basic shape of the the um, crown dialed in. Let's go ahead and use our move brush here. Oh, we got topological. Okay. Uh, crown dialed in and then just modeled it straight across. That would have been a little bit easier. And then mirror, turn off LSIM, mirror and weld, jewels, and then very similar little decoration on the top here. So I guess we you know what? We could just duplicate this whole thing off, hold down control shift, isolate these pieces, delete hidden, and we'll just move these up in this normal direction here, 
move them back in. Actually, before we do that, let's delete that one. We need to merge all of these down. Take all these ones. Okay, yeah. Duplicate. Isolate this one. Delete hidden. W. Let's uniformly scale this in. And as I scale them in, with LSIM turned off, they'll scale in to the middle here, which is kind of what I want. And then we can turn on LSIM. Let's see how this works. Crap. Let's go ahead and weld this again. There we go. Mask this out. Just grab this front one here, go to Unmesh Mesh Center, scale it down, match the other ones. Delete hidden, and let's see if I can't just, ah, doing a mirror and weld on here would be not that great. I could rotate around and duplicate it. Let's go to Unmesh Mesh Center here. We've got our normal angle set, so if I duplicate this, and then hold down shift and say 180. Delete that one. Hold down shift, shoot them to the top, merge them down. Something like that. Alrighty, put this one to bed here. Move these top teeth closer together here. So I'm going to, this might be a little bit tougher. Let's go to auto groups, W, control tap this one, go out of X symmetry here. It's gonna weld those together, but that's okay. So that was a mix of organic and hard surface and uh, things on an angle. Probably could have tackled that problem from a little bit better of a position, but that's okay. It worked out. So let's fix these eyebrows real quick. Let's go ahead and collapse this edge in, this edge in. And again, we're going to set our crease level to three. Our dynamic smooth subdiv to four. Actually, let's do a little better than that. Let's do crease level of one, smooth subdiv of three. There we go. And the eyes are coming out above it. Let's see if we can't rotate those back a little bit. And then maybe pop these eyebrows out. Something like that. There we go. Whew. Um, yeah, so on collapse edge, it's basically just, so the question is, um, how does collapse edge work? And if we just take a, boy, this thing's full of stuff here. Go ahead and make poly mesh 3D. And you can go through here. So you can do like collapse poly loop and you can collapse entire poly loops here like so, but you have to choose 
which one to collapse it to. Now there, I don't believe there's any collapse to center. So if you want to do that, you got to go to insert multiple edge loops, and then you can collapse poly loop to the center here. Um, also, if you just collapse an edge here, you can collapse down or you can collapse up. You just kind of pick which one you want. And then as you go through here, you just kind of go, okay, I'm dragging down as I collapse these edges and I'm dragging up as I collapse these edges. And then if you're trying to make a specific shape, you can go through here and now you can cube mesh this stuff in or out or whatever you wanted to make. So let's go ahead and save this in here. And what else I want to make here? Some of these look pretty fun. Um, got some leaves. This one looks like it could be interesting. So let's go to I'm trying to set up. I want to use a sphere. I want to use a torus. Let's use. So we're going to make this thing right here. If we go to our ring 3D here, go into edit mode, um, I think this will work just fine. So let's go ahead and make poly mesh 3D here and go to texture. And again, we can always zero mesh this stuff to get um, exactly what we're looking for here. And I'm going to model this one straight on. There's no point in trying to model it um, in that view here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this off and we'll scale it. I don't want to scale it thicker necessarily yet, but I do want to scale it like so. And then in the middle there, looks like if we go to append a sphere and then we scale the sphere to kind of fit. And we'll go ahead and scale it down so it's not quite so obtrusive here. Here's our basic ring shape. And then we'll go. Do I ever see these from the back? Split on mass points. If you want to taper this one, I'm going to hold down control and then alt, go to unmesh mesh center with X turned off. And now we can just kind of taper this down a little bit. And then the leaves, a lot of different ways to do leaves. Let's do sphere, make poly mesh 3D. I'm going to mask this leaf shape here. Guess you could also use shadow box or you could just model it. I'm going to get the bend built in using this sphere here. And you can also use your bend curve. Actually, you know what? Let's hit X symmetry here. That'll make it so that we get a nice symmetrical leaf. And on this one, to control W here, let's go to delete lower and we can isolate this. We can delete hit and we can polish by features and kind of smooth those edges out. And this can be our zero mesh leaf shape. Let's go ahead and go into our move ACU, pull this out to a point and also go into our Damien standard here. Z remesh this across the X. And 
Maybe not. Let's go back before we did that. Let's see. Hmm. Let's try this. QMesh, Polygroup Island. Let's go to Polish by Features. There we go. Half. All right, so we got our basic leaf shape. Um, wondering if we go here, let's go to bevel edge loop complete. We'll put in a little bevel here, and then we'll take this QMesh Polygroup Island, and we'll just hold down Shift. Actually, let's do another one. Let's go a quick mirror and weld, and then we'll do another bevel. I suppose we could just mask edge loop complete here, invert that mask, hit W. We can just pull this down. Like so. But before we do that, let's go ahead and mask this end out. If we want to bow these out a little bit, let's see if we can't mask another edge loop complete here. We can go in here and sculpt this as well, but it's easy enough to kind of dial this in. Um, and, you know, going through here and sculpting this on a DynaMesh and getting a nice leaf shape is probably what I would do, but I figured I'd try something different, which for live streaming might not be the best choice, but. We'll give it a shot. Okay, so now we've got our leaf here. Let's go ahead and give it some thickness here. Let's go to QMesh. All S, actually, let's go to Extrude, all polygons, just in case QMesh decides to do something weird. And now when I hit D, we can kind of get that leaf shape going. And now if we want to insert this, let's do, let's clean these up just a little bit. Point in here, and then towards the back, I really don't care about this because it's going to be kind of buried quite a bit, but maybe something like this. All right, so B, create insert mesh new. We'll go back to what we were working on. We have X symmetry turned on. So now we can just drag these out. that'll work. Let's go ahead and spin these around. Looks like they kind of sit forward just a little bit. Okay, so now we can turn on perspective, Shift-Z, and we can kind of dial in a little bit better. We'll tilt it a little bit, swoop it down, swoop it back, maybe scale it down just a bit. Stem looks all right. Let's go ahead and split those off. Split mass points, and we'll go ahead and rotate this back. Let's turn off X symmetry, go to the middle, reset it, turn X back on, and now we can... Maybe push this back. Now, in order to get a little tilt to this thing, it's going to need more resolution. So we'll go in here to uh, number one. Do we throw it off axis here? We'll do a mirror and weld. And then we'll go in here to insert multiple edge loops. No interac interactive elevation. Just want to give it a little bit of resolution here. We'll go ahead and scale it along its axis just a bit. And then again, use our trusty bend arc. And those are just going to be capsules. So if we go to brush insert, or alt e m. And 
now my M key doesn't work anymore. All right, I think it's time to give ZBrush a rest here. Uh, I do have a capsule here, but it's not rounded, so we're just going to take a simple sphere here. We'll do a sphere 12, and we'll drag this right here across the X symmetry. Going to solo mode here. Let's go ahead and rotate these around just a bit. So in order to make those long shapes, let's go to the front here. Hold down Control Shift. I'm going to isolate these bottom ones here. Control Tap. Control Tap to invert. W. Hold down Control. Just drag this out. Now I'm going to have to bend these a little bit. So again, I'm going to have to go in here to insert multiple edge loops, and then just put some more res in there. So you control W, make it all one polygroup. And I keep forgetting to set a position for this one. So we'll go ahead and go back down to our document here. We're going to go to clear all, reset custom one, and now I've got our little eyeballs. We can kind of dial in where those need to go. And you can just use your move brush and kind of move them out a little bit. Um, we'll give this bend arc a shot here. So we're going to position this right along where it should be. And then bend arc, turn off X, bend arc, and then we can just kind of bend this along the surface of it a little bit. And it looks like we're going to have to accept that and then go in here and scale these down quite a bit. You could also try using Matchmaker Brush. Let's do a quick mirror and weld. X symmetry. That is some crazy perspective here because this one works and this one is down the midline. So we can kind of split the difference here. Let's go to Unmesh Mesh Center. We'll spread these out just a little bit, scale them up just a tad, curve them out just a little bit. There we go. Sometimes you just got to eyeball the eyeballs. All right, something like this. D, 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 D for our dynamic subdivisions. Um, for this sphere in here. I don't like those polarized caps, so let's go ahead and do a quick zero mesh. Uh, adapt size down to zero half. <laughs> Alright, and that just kind of clears up that topology just a little bit. Um, again, I don't know what the back of these are supposed to look like. I suppose something like that. I don't remember seeing any reference for that. But that's okay. Um, it looks like this one, I tapered it towards the bottom but I probably should have tapered it up towards the top a little bit here. And we'll go in there to smooth, smooth that out just a bit. I kind of want to hide this top too. And all of this stuff tilts back, so that's probably why I was um, having a hard time positioning these things with a reference. But what I can do is I can hit W, go to Move Multiple Subtools. If I want to keep these the same subtool, go ahead and put this where it needs to go, reset it, and then I can hold down Control Shift, and we go. Okay, I'm going to clear it out, um, or you can just go through here and you can start tapping. But I like to go ahead and clear my selection out, and then I want to move this one, this one, this one, this one all together, and then I can go tilt back. And then, you know, before you get out of here, you can just clear your selection again. And now, this thing we can kind of... Move forward. Do I still have... The moves brush is doing something weird. Yeah, what is that? What is that? Do I have, oh, that's my polygroups is still on. I knew something weird was still on. Uh, 
Uh, question, do you have any good anatomy reference image sites I can use? I can't find any understandable image to learn off of. i um, not a big fan of learning anatomy off of images. Um, scan data is good. I don't have any scan data on this computer, unfortunately. Uh, I need to remind myself to move scan data over. Um, 1024 has really good scan body or anatomy reference. Oh, you know what? I keep forgetting. Give me a second. Uh, is this the one? Let me let me check my email real quick. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I keep saying I'm gonna tell people to go here whenever anatomy comes up. Ah, there we go. Um, here, go to uh, Pascal Ackerman's uh, Gumroad. Here, I'll link you guys to it. There you go. There's some good anatomy reference right there. I, I keep forgetting. He emailed me a while ago, and I was like, yeah, I can. Whenever it comes up about anatomy, I'll send people there, and then I always forget. So. Go there for anatomy. <laughs> um, also, if you're doing like muscle, deep muscle anatomy here. Let's see if this shows up. I like using zygote body. So we can go, okay, all I want to see is muscles and bones. Here, and then you can go through here and you can click through here and you can see, okay, this is exactly, let's take our bicep here and let's get rid of our muscles with just our bicep selected and we'll dial our, this down. And now we can see exactly where those heads of the biceps and insertion. So if you really want to get deeper into where the muscles are ending up and exactly uh, where they are and how they interact with each other, zygote body is another good one for reference here. And then you can dial these muscles back in. You can go, okay, let's look at the pec with the biceps. Or if you don't want the biceps, just get rid of them. And now you can just look at the pec and the bones. You can see, oh, there's the sternum and the clavicle and what rib it hits. And then, you know, where it detaches on the bones here. This is a really cool one. I probably should go through here and refresh myself. Yeah, that looks right. <laughs> um... Uh, well, well, what's the other one? Uh, if you want surface anatomy, um, God, it's been a while since I've looked at this stuff. It would be 3DSK is another good one. 3D.SK, I believe. You use that. Uh, we've gone over some anatomy. You know what? We could do another spin through anatomy. That might be kind of fun. You guys want to do some anatomy? You got about 45 minutes left. All right, let's do crease dynamic here. All right, we got another one to add to our collection here. All right, let's do some anatomy. You know what? Let's give ZBrush a rest. We'll go to the initialize ZBrush here. Hey, Thunder. Thanks for showing up. Um, normally, I would say if you want to start from uh, things where you can uh, dial in, let's go to tool. You can start with any of these base bodies. You can start with your own base body. You can start with just a skeleton here. And if you wanted to start with a skeleton, let's go over here to Matcap. And uh, so we had the skeleton select, we can just do delete other. There we go. Good morning, hired gun. And if you wanted to do like a, a muscle brush, you could you could use brush curve. You can go to like brush BC, curve tube, and under the stroke settings here, you can um, go in here to the curve functions. And you could say, Curve tube. There we go. So we got curve mode turned on. Uh, let's turn on, I think intensity is the one we want, but we can go like kind of thin to thick to thin. 
and then you could do as line and then you could just go from like here to here and kind of just dial dial these things in and then you tap off and then this is sternal mastoid now this one wouldn't go thick to thin to thin it would go thick to thin so if you wanted to change that you could dial that in or you could just go up here you can like inflate this up and then you can go through here and you can H polish this back just to kind of get that muscle in there um, that's an easier way you can also make your own muscle brush but push comes to shove you can just do that um, this is good for like just dialing in you know, having a skeleton in here and kind of practicing where the muscles go and uh, all that good stuff. Um, and if any of you want to also, you can duplicate the skeleton off and you can go through here and you can like do an inflate on the skeleton and then you can just dynamesh that together. And now you've got kind of clay that you can go through and you can, uh, we've done this before on this channel, go through here, let's turn off RGB, let's turn off colorize for this stuff. And now you've kind of got skin and muscle you can just quickly go through here now of course if you're going to have any sort of thickness to your object make sure you go in there and for your brushes you do auto masking back face masking for any of these like clay buildup and clay brushes here that way, when you dynamesh, it's not going to suck through here. Um, you can also go through here and inflate, because you know that chest cavity is going to be all full up. So you could put a little sphere in there and inflate it, or not. But at least this way, you have, you know, landmarks underneath your objects. So you can kind of see, like, okay, how close do the does the rib cage and the muscles sit? You can just start kind of draping over these muscles here and not have to go through and build up with a... I mean, it's not bad practice. I mean, I would say definitely go in there with your muscle brush and let's go ahead and just polish by feature this thing down. There we go. Inflate this out. So now you can go through here with your clay brush. Let's do a clay brush with an Alpha 6. And we'll kind of clay brush this in and crank that intensity up just a bit. And that underneath structure will just kind of keep you, let's crank that Z intensity up a bit. And also, I like how all of a sudden none of my hotkeys are working. Oh, let's do a quick save. And we'll go over here. And we will restart the brush. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Give ZBrush a second to start back up here. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. It likes to start up full screen. Uh, oh yeah, if you guys missed it, speaking of ZBrush, so let's go ahead and Go ahead and hide that with our comma key. We'll go to document. I'll give me a new document. W size on. And if you go to my YouTube channel here, this is Google Pavlovich YouTube. You go to video playlist. Actually, video playlist. Uh, so we did. Let's just go back here. Um, okay, so go to videos. I haven't organized these yet very well. Um, Actually, let's go to playlist and go to full episodes, live stream full episodes. So on my channel, we went through the making of this weapon here. It's Pavark 23, 24, 25, and 26. So I'm going to go through here and edit this down into a digestible, uh, give it its own playlist. But we went through and modeled this weapon start to finish. I didn't model everything out, but I just went over the basic techniques of how to achieve all these different things using the new features in ZBrush 4R8. Speaking of, if you go to my intro to ZBrush 4R8 um, playlist, what's new? ZBrush 4R8, what's new? That's, that'll walk you through everything that's new in ZBrush 4R8. But um, we went through there, and then yesterday we posted a video on how to take it from ZBrush and using um, Instalod going straight from you know our high-res ZBrush file to an automatic game res with UVs and baked maps 
and then we threw that into Painter. Then we took Painter for a quick spin, textured it up, threw it into iRay, and then we went into uh, Maya, threw the Stingray PBR shader on it, and then we batch made some LODs. So, and the game rest stuff was the easy part. So I like to stay in ZBrush and just do high res stuff and have fun and design things. Uh, and the production and the game res work is really tedious and boring. So I try and skip that when I can. Um, but we also went over, you know, you know, I mean, I used Instalot in this instance, but um, in intro to, or in the live stream full episodes, we did go through the process of, so here, we went from ZBrush and we broke it down and we used, um, ZBrush to give us a game res, and I took it into Maya, and then we did some quick just auto UVs, and then threw it into Painter and did the exact same thing. Um, the Instalod one's much nicer. It's shippable. It's got nice game res UVs, and they do the vertex normals and UV splitting and hardening the edges on the UV splits and baking maps, and it makes it very very production oriented, production worthy. Uh, but we did a pretty good job just using just using ZBrush to do that as well. Um, what anatomy books do I recommend? I don't have any on me. I left those. I have anatomy books at work and school. Um, trying to, let's do our, let's load up our quick save here. Uh, off the top of my head. Um, gosh, I don't really remember. And it's, kind of interesting too is because I learned anatomy backwards. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. I learned anatomy like the names of the anatomy first and not really the important stuff like what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> you know, so um, let me just talk some anatomy here. I would suggest and I don't know, I'm kind of learning, I think I'm learning anatomy the right way now. Um, which is starting surface anatomy and then getting, you know, being able to build your forms and make it dynamic and make the body um, something, you know, getting the basics of the body down first before going in there and going, oh, the uh, medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle and the great trochanter and the acromion process of the scapula and the coracoid process and the coracoid brachialis that attaches to that to the mid midpoint of the humerus it's all that's it's good to know it's a good way to discuss anatomy and it makes you uh, able to discuss anatomy in a precise way and uh, you can talk the talk but in my experience the anatomy people that i've watched lately um i've just been going through some anatomy stuff online and the better anatomy resources that I've found, not book-wise, but just like people-wise, it seems like the people who don't really know the names that well, but do really good anatomy, are... F <laughs> it's it's kind of weird. I wouldn't say everybody. I would say there are anatomists out there who know the names and know anatomy very well as well. Um, but there's also a lot of people who don't know the names at all. Like, they know shoulder, and they know hips kind of it's not very accurate like what's hips you know is that this is that your uh, iliac crest or your great trochanter um your anterior superior iliac spine you know that kind of stuff but they seem to actually be better at creating convincing dynamic oh, let's go ahead and turn our lazy radius off here um figures more so than the people who really know the names but their anatomy work itself isn't really all that exciting. It isn't really all that intriguing. They got the fundamentals down, but their final product is kind of meh. I found that to be true over and over again. So my advice to you is really get in there and have fun with just kind of blocking out things in kind of just a general way and then go in there and kind of break it down you know and by that I just mean figure out proportions forms um, and, and you know this I wouldn't even do I would say start with this let's go to um, sphere 3d go into edit mode 
make polymesh 3D, go into X symmetry here, and let's say this is our rib cage, and we're going to go ahead and just do like a clip curve, and we'll go ahead and clip this back. Let's go ahead and X symmetry floor. Just want to make sure I'm oriented the right way. Okay, so we've clipped this back here, and we're going to go ahead and scale this in. So let's say this is going to be our rib cage here, and it looks like I should have. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, and also, let's go in here with our. Let's go ahead and turn this on, but we can turn off the lines because we don't really need to see those. So we can go through here and like, okay, this is our rib cage. Um, our neck hole is going to be at the top here. Let's go ahead and dynamish this while we're talking about it. So here's our rib cage. About halfway down the rib cage is going to be where our sternum, sternum stops. And then this is going to continue down, and this is going to be kind of the shelf. And on the back of the rib cage here, that'll just be kind of this form. So just starting very simple, uh, making sure that there is like a lean to the rib cage back. Then if you want to make a pelvis, I'm just going to control drag out a copy of this one. We'll scoot it back and we'll scale it down. Now the pelvis is going to be about as wide as the rib cage. And on the human side, let's go ahead and make this rib cage a little bit smaller here. But it won't be this wide here. So something like this. And this is the pelvis is going to tilt back. Um, and of course, this pelvis here, we don't need to do that. And instead of doing like, oh, the iliac crest and the anterior superior iliac spine and going in here and putting in the sacrum and the coccyx and making this all bull shaped and putting in, you know, the ischium and all this stuff in here, it's basically just make a pelvis shape like this. This is good enough. And in fact, uh, for me, it's a lot easier to kind of see the pelvis shape as kind of like a pair of underwear, especially when I'm drawing it. It kind of allows me to turn it in space a little bit better. So if I was sketching this, it would be more like... an underwear shape, and then over here on the side, this would be where our legs go. And speaking of the legs, let's go ahead and widen these out just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and do, um, grab some cylinders here. Let's go ahead and split mass points. We'll go ahead and scale these down. And we'll go ahead and dynamesh these as well. So now we can just smooth these out. And then these legs. We'll do the quads. Uh, you know what? We'll just do the basic shape. So we'll go ahead and then use our inflate brush. We'll go inflate here, and then we'll smooth down here. Let's go ahead and lower this resolution a bit too. There we go. Now we're talking. So we've got the nice curve of the body, the S curve of the spine. It kind of goes neck down here. So your C7 is going to be right about in here somewhere. And then speaking of your head, let's go ahead and just put a sphere here, and we'll stretch this out. So from the front, the head's going to be about 70-30, so, you know, not a full box, but in the back it is going to be more of a full box, but we can just keep this as our face here, and then we can just drag this one off, and we can use this as our cranium. Try to mesh all these together. So this will just be a start of our head. Something like that. And we can get more in depth on, you know, how far down this goes and how far down this goes and where these things need to be positioned. Let's go ahead and just do a split to parts here. And we'll do a quick save and we'll reload this here. Uh, thinking about getting copy of Grey's Anatomy, I think that's overboard. Um, I do have, you know, very, very precise anatomical stuff, but I, I swear that starting basic and starting with just superficial anatomy and then diving in, but it's hard to say that too, because a lot of what you're making depends on landmarks. So 
Yeah, I mean, you do need to know that there is an iliac crest in here, and you do need to know there's a bottom of a rib cage here so you can judge distances and where the rectus abdominis fits and where the shoulder girdle is. So once you start making, you know, your collarbone here, making sure that you have draft to your body and making sure that there is a spine to the scapula here, these are all things you need to know. Um, but learning it at a, from a superficial level in just seems to be a little bit um, I don't know I think your results might be better and, and again this, this is also kind of a s subjective thing as well some people learn very well like starting from a skeleton and then adding muscles to that skeleton and then adding skin to that and then they're like oh pff, I know anatomy perfectly um, I learned it that way and I almost kind of I didn't have to unlearn anything but it was, I seem to get more out of doing the superficial stuff. But maybe that's because I already knew the deeper stuff. So it was kind of an easier transition to me. I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and drop in a sphere here. And we'll go ahead and split this off here. And speaking of the rectus abdominis here, it's going to kind of dial in. It's going to go from the sternum to the bottom bowl of your body here. And if we want to, we could also, and it's going to be right, you know, somewhere between, you know, the nipples here. And we'll get into uh, chest here, but we can also uh, hit X, hold down control, drag this out, we'll go and split mass points. We'll do a quick mirror, mirror and weld, scale this down across the X axis here. We can turn these into obliques, or at least the obliques bulge. Um, and also knowing the difference between how females and males tend to accumulate fat and where they tend to accumulate fat and how their ratios go from their, uh, generally speaking, like their hips and stuff uh, also helps a lot. And getting those differences dialed in is very, very much more helpful. Um, let's go ahead and drop a cylinder in here. Let's go split mass points here, and we'll just drop this head. Come on, go down mesh, mesh center. There we go, ZBrush. I'll go ahead and scale this up. And again, I'm just using DynaMesh for all this stuff. You don't have to keep it DynaMesh. Um, let's do a quick mirror and weld. X symmetry on. There we go. So we'll just really quickly do kind of a torso thing. We don't got that much time left, so we'll go split mass points. We'll keep it to the torso. We'll call that our deltoid. So, we'll put our deltoid in, and that's going to go from spine of the scapula all the way around the front of the clavicle. And then uh, there's going to be a humerus. That's going to go from your shoulder girdle, which is going to be underneath the acromion process in the clavicle. You're going to have your little humerus head in there. Your humerus is going to go down to about the bottom of your rib cage. And then this is going to go about halfway down your humerus there. So you can just kind of dial that in. And then um, this head's looking a little long here. So if you go one head down, and also let's go ahead and clip this back. Man, ZBrush really wants to keep, <laughs> it keeps snapping me back to that. Let's go ahead and also shave off the sides a little bit. Um, if we want to find the planes of the face a little bit better, Let's go ahead and dial that in. So if we go one head down, about halfway down the head is going to be our eye line. So we can kind of scoop out where that eye line goes. And also we're looking at draft of the face. So it's going to kind of pull back here and kind of scoop this in. Let's crank our Z intensity up a little bit and turn our lazy radius off. There we go. And then we got our brow line 
up above, and then between the brow line and the bottom of the chin, we're going to have our nose line here. For our nose, let's go ahead and put in, we should probably do a cube, but we're going to stick with spheres here. Keep these things separate for now. Let's go split mass points, dynamesh that. And from the side of the head here, we can go ahead and clip this in. Uh, males will tend to have a bit more of a brow ridge than females here. And we're just giving ourselves a place to put the eyeballs here. Um, if you take the middle of the face and you go out from a 45 degree angle, you'll tend to find the um, tear ducts, and let's go ahead and put in our eyeballs here. Let's go ahead and do split mass points, and we'll just dial those in. And as we build this up and put eyelids and stuff on here, you're basically going to have one eye length in between, one eye length here, and then another eye length out to the sides of the face. Now we were talking about the sides of the face here. That's going to be where our cheekbones are and our zygomatic arch goes back here. So we've got these this brow line here, brow to the nose. Let's go ahead and clip this back. We'll also kind of widen this out just a little bit. And again, just general shapes, narrow to thick. Um, from here, we can divide this into thirds. And now we've got our mouth line here. And then our chin. Uh, the chin we could go in there and put in a little bit of a circle in there, but I think this will be fine. And now we can start going, okay, so from the corner of the cheekbones here, that'll tend to curve down. Sometimes it'll go to the nose, sometimes it'll go to the mouth, sometimes it'll go all the way to the chin. Kind of depends on your face. Uh, comic book artists tend to do like this kind of look here, just to kind of define these, these planes of the face here. Cheekbones and then the side of the face. Go ahead and fill this out just a little bit more. And then your mouth is going to sit on a curved plane in here. You don't want that sitting on a flat plane. You want it sitting on a nice curved plane here. Filtrum. There we go. And then if you take this bottom plane here, or this bottom line here, and you go out to the side, that's where your jaw is going to curve up. Now on this side, this is going to fit in a box. Uh, depending on the books you read, either that box is going to include the nose, or it's just going to go from here to here, and the nose and the chin is going to go past to fit it in a box. Um, if we want to, we go to insert a cube, turn on transparency here. We can go, okay. So basically what I'm talking about is, does it fit here or does it fit the whole head? I tend to do hereabouts. And if we turn on lines here, you can see here's the midline. So our jaw for our head here is gonna go back to that midline here. And then also that eye line straight back is gonna be about where this cranium starts dipping in. So eye line straight back, so it's gonna go here and then it's gonna start dipping up like this. Let's go ahead and we wanna keep that. There we go, something like that. If you want to sculpt through an object, turn on um, ghost and your face kind of tapers like so. And also when you're drawing stuff Depending on who you're watching draw, let's go ahead and get rid of the box here. Sometimes they'll do, let's see if I can just do this here. Let's go. So, a couple different ways. You've got a head here. You got your midline, you can start hairline, one third, one third, and now you've got your brow line and your nose line. 
or you can make your head here midline and then you can go okay halfway down and you know you could do both but you know halfway down is my eye line then you got your brown line and now you've got you know the sides of the head here it goes down to the chin and then the jaw and then your nose line here and then your mouth same thing for this one but that hairline here because you're going to have your nose to your chin is equal to the nose to your brow is equal to the brow to the hairline so kind of dividing up your face like that is sometimes useful whatever gets you there faster and precisely and then on there if you want to use your muscle brush um, did this maintain our settings? Oh, I don't think it did. Let's do as line. I like that better. I'm going to try off bend as well. Then we'll go back in here to our stroke curve, curve functions, curve modifiers, curve fall off, thin to thick to thin. Can do better than that. I guess size needs to be on. Yeah, so intensity, not so much. Size, yes. And you know what? I guess we can't turn bend back on. Or we can just tap off and use our move brush here and then use our inflate. So that's going to go from, there's going to be a lump uh, right here on your cranium here and it's going to attach here to here. And then another piece of this is going to shoot off from the side here and then you're gonna have your trapezes back here and this is where it gets to be like okay do you want to model all this stuff in or you just want to sculpt it in I'll leave that up to you and we'll put a little notch in here for the top of the sternum and then that's where our clavicles, clavicles go and then our deltoids they kind of swing forward a little bit and then again our chest line one head down two heads down is our chest line here and then our pecs are going to tuck back up in here. Now you could put, again, more mesh on here for your pectoralis major. Um, or you can just kind of go in here and sculpt it in. You can start putting in your serratus anterior over here and then your obliques feathering in here. And this, you know, something, you know, depending on some stuff, like if you're doing, um, you want to do like a Superman rib cage, they tend to exaggerate, you know, this is very very deep so you got your abs here and then this curves way in like this and then you've got let's go ahead and just do it so you've got these abs here that's the top shelf of your rib cage then you're gonna have these abs here which is gonna go down to our belly button like this um, really the belly button should be three heads down, so one heads down, two heads down, three heads down, uh, and then four heads down should be the bottom of your pelvis here. So we need to kind of adjust this a little bit. And really the belly button here should kind of be the top of your pelvis, so we're looking more at like this much for your pelvis shape here. No big deal. Let's make some adjustments. There we go. And then our rectus abdominis here. And then our groin. We can get, uh, so your adductors would be here. That would be where your leg shape goes. And then your gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, and your tensor. And your sartorius kind of breaks those up. But I think we're kind of running out of time, so we'll keep it up here. Um, let's see. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, Automod's doing some crazy stuff. Cool. Yeah, you check out Raphael Grissetti. Uh, oldest Zarin's Anatomy. <laughs> I have no idea why it's... Yeah. I don't know why it's, uh, it's keeping those. Um, yeah, so this is 48P2. Was there a question about that? Yeah, this is the gizmo that's in 4RAP2. If you need to want to know more about that, um, Google Pavlovich YouTube, and then go to Zebras 4 8 what's new? And there are 61 videos, about four hours worth of video content, and all the new stuff in ZBrush. So that'll walk you through. In fact, the first four or five is gizmos and custom gizmos. 
cool. Cool. Take it easy, uh, Thunder Bunny. Uh, show how to control the direction of the clap set function. You just gotta pick one, just like we did earlier. Like take a cylinder, make poly mesh 3D, and then go collapse edge. You just go up or down. I don't know which way. I don't know if there's a way to like control it, but you just pick one. So if I go collapse and then down, it goes up. So then it just for the rest of these, I just collapse it and then pull my mouse down. And then I know collapse and up. So here collapse and up also goes down. So collapse and down on this one. Yeah, collapse and up will go the opposite way. So that's that's the only way I know how to control them. Scott Eaton's class. Check those out. Yeah, so now this one is kind of a uh, very, very deep, big shelf kind of um, thing here in the obliques. And then you're going to have, you know, lats back here. Your lats are going to come through here. Your trapezius is going to go from the back of your occipital protuberance of your head and then down the back and then to the little bit of the clavicle, I think, and then down the spine of the scapula and then about down about the midway of the back. And then your lats kind of come in here. Um, the infraspinatus, teres major and teres minor of the back get a little bit complicated depending on the pose of your body. And that's why I think superficial anatomy is super important because, especially in the face, you can learn all the muscles of the face and I don't think it'll help you that much as far as constructing a face. Go ahead and move all this stuff back here. You can also do, when you move multiple subtools, hold down control shift and grab all of these. And sometimes ZBrush will pop out things here. For some reason. But yeah, this stuff's kind of a fun exercise. Um, and yeah, at this point you could decide, you know, do I want to dial in all of these things? And it's not terribly difficult to just go through here and just insert a mesh and kind of start throwing in like your um, infraspinatus, for example. Now we don't have a scapula per se, but you can give indications of the scapula here and your C7. You know, you can just kind of dial those in. Um, or in fact, let's take this one and we'll just move it up. We'll make this traps. We'll go here. Uh-oh. Quick save. Scooch these together. Dynamesh those. There we go. Take these, we'll just inflate this back up in here and knock it back down. And go into our clay buildup. We can use this to kind of dictate. And you know, your jaw's not going to come back and then hit this. There's going to be a here. You got the hyoid bone right towards the bottom here, and then you've got your thyroid cartilage. Which is going to be your Adam's apple, so we can just take this and duplicate it down, scale it down just a little bit. So, kind of this kind of form here.
just knock these back just a little bit. And then you can start merging stuff together where it makes sense. So we can take this one and this one and I guess probably the neck even. Merge all these down. Put them together. And then these striations are going to kind of radiate out because these kind of come in and like we were talking about before, I don't think I have zygote body up anymore, but you could see the uh, pectoralis going, this looks like it's going a little too forward here. There we go. Um, from the clavicle in here and it kind of twists over and attaches to the humerus and then it comes over here and goes down the sternum and then over a couple of these ribs. And that is basically your chest line there. And again, just making sure you have like the draft of the face, the curvature of the spine. There's going to be um, some spinal muscles down here uh, that would fill in this gap here, but this is going to come out and then go down to your sacrum here. But making sure you have just kind of a bend of your body. And if you want to, you could also just do a quick merge visible. And then just take all these things. X symmetry. There we go. Just kind of dial in little adjustments here and there. Like I said, this will be a little bit more filled out than that. That's pretty intense. Uh, but there's more muscles back here. In fact, your lats are going to push this in, and then you're going to have sp uh, spinal muscles underneath those lats. So that'll kind of fill in on the side there. But yeah, these are just fun exercises to do to kind of build out bodies. And in fact, let's go ahead and let me take this brow up. That'll be one plane. And then the bottom of this here will be another plane here. And then this will kind of wrap around here. Those settings here. We'll call this streaming blockout zero zero one. Cool. All right. Um, I don't have an insert mesh to draw on muscles, but you can make one. I usually just grab a sphere. But if you have more different types of muscles you want to insert, you could certainly make those. Um, cool. Yeah, and I would say proportions and basics forms, yeah, if you, and now we use scan data. If you're, all you're looking for is like, here's the perfect sculpt of a human body, scan data is pretty good for that. As far as like learning how to, um, Go out of edit mode here and going in here and going, okay, you know, sculpting a body here and here's my rib cage and then here's my um, pelvis here and then here's my neck hole and here's my arm hole and then going through here and just kind of drawing these things out and to talking about, you know, head to the chest line and the obliques and the rectus abdominis and where the abs go. Um, the This kind of stuff is way way more important, I think, than here's a perfect human sculpt. Isn't it great? Because I can use scan data for that. But how do I know how to make a human out of my head? And also following like, you know, just even this leg um, shape here is like, okay, so this is going to curve in and then my, you know, kind of like the Bridgman stuff. So you can kind of dial in how these legs and forms overlap and you go thick to thin and you go um, high to low and then low to high. Uh, same thing for the arms here. You got your deltoid and then you got your um, tricep and then your deltoid or your bicep goes in here and your deltoid and here's your clavicle and then your long supinator or your brachioradialis here goes down to your wrist and then 
you know, all of this stuff is really important. And also the proportions of all these things too, and where, where you get and why you get the little bump from your medial epicondyl down to your flexors and then your extensors over here on the top of your um, arm here and then your biceps. All of these things, yeah, they're, you know, they're fairly superficial. They, re they require some knowledge of underneath anatomy. Um, if we can get a better alpha. There we go, that's better. Yeah, but that kind of stuff Yeah, so here's the chest here, and the pelvis, and then the legs, and then, I don't know why I'm drawing this in ZBrush, but. And then talking about the forms, and the proportions, and the anatomy, and why you make uh, the decisions you do like on the kneecap here with the tibia and the fat deposits under the knee and then the swoop from your tibia to your uh, fibula it goes down to your ankles here and then your feet you know this kind of stuff is way more interesting and important than getting caught up in you know the names and just doing a really nice sculpt because it doesn't explain anything <laughs> yeah, and I could I could probably use um there's a there's a, something in here I think Z plugin. Is there a quick sketch? Yeah. Quick sketch is probably a better here. So if I go over here to let's grab our standard brush here. I like the standard brush more than the pin stuff. There we go. A little bit better. And the cool thing about this is you can go through here and you got your rib cage, you've got your head. And then once you've got these things kind of dialed in, you can go up here to your RGB intensity, color, fill object. Let's grab a white here. Knock it back. And now we can go back in. And you can start laying in like, okay, so here's our clavicle is going to go, and then our chest muscles in here. And our lats. And then again, if we're doing that Superman chest, we can come back down here for the abs. And this is our rectus abdominis coming down the middle. And then our obliques on the side, and then the bottom of our pelvis here. And then our deltoid here, and then our triceps, and our biceps, and our brachioradialis and all this stuff so we'll do a proper I don't know eventually we'll do like a proper anatomy thing where I go through and I don't know this is the this is the more of the fun stuff for me the gluteus medius and the great trochanter and these things kind of pull in here and then these go to the iliac crest in here and then your leg starts here so I don't know it's fun I will see you guys later. Thanks for showing up. Um, paint stop I haven't used, so I'm a, I'm weary to kind of pull that up. But um, maybe we'll do that next time. We'll do some drawing in ZBrush. Have a little bit of fun. Uh, but thanks, everybody. I'm going to head on out. If I miss any um, questions in here, I don't think I did. I did a quick look through, but um, I'll go through real quick and see if I need to add anything to my stuff. So anyway, thanks for showing up, everybody. See you guys. I won't be here next week on this channel. Um, I'm, it's Halloween, but that's not why I'm going to be out, but uh, I won't be able to hear, be here. So thanks everybody.